don't give up that, you know, the water, the discipline from that cup unless you have to. So lower the barrier of entry to doing good things by having good food in your house, having a plan in place, going to bed on time, getting up on time, all those things. When you don't do them, they tap into your discipline. And again, you only have so much. So don't give it up unless you have to whatever results that you want to achieve, you should track it along the way. That way you continue to stay positive and that motivation will stay high because you're getting a result over and over and over. I always refer back to the GPS example. You get in your car, you need to go somewhere, you pull out your phone, put in your GPS. Well, if you don't put a destination in the GPS, it's not taking you anywhere. It's the same thing here. So make sure that you know where you wanna go and then you create a plan to get there over time and get these nice little wins along the way. In today's episode of Only the Greatest Podcast, I hope to come to you with a little bit of a different angle on a subject that is often discussed in fitness, which is staying motivated. Staying motivated, we all know, is difficult. It has its ups and its downs. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Philip. I own and operate OTG Fitness, which is a private personal training gym currently in Webster. We hope to spread this message all around Houston uh, very soon. We just signed the lease on our second location, which will be in Pearland. And again, we hope to spread the message of health and fitness all over Houston. And that's what this podcast is all about. And I think that I am uniquely qualified to discuss how difficult it is to stay motivated because of my past, because of my journey, and I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, basically, I grew up very overweight. Fitness really changed my life. And I know what it's like to feel unmotivated, to not want to do anything. I've dealt with depression, anxiety, ADHD uh, as a child. I don't have any of these things anymore. I don't think that I deal with them because of fitness, because of exercise, because of consistently doing good things for myself, I've been able to overcome those issues. Um, I have even suffered from PTSD. When I was a teenager, I actually watched my mother have a heart attack and die. And as unfortunate as that was, and how horrible that I obviously felt for a period of time, I have gained the strength and knowledge on techniques and thought processes, whatever you want to call them, psychology, to overcome these feelings of unmotivation, if you want to call them. And yeah, it's hard, and it comes with ups and downs. And I know when it comes to health and fitness, everyone just says, you have to make it a lifestyle. And yeah, that is true. And we all know that. But how do we make it a lifestyle? That's like telling someone that is very overweight, just eat less. Well, duh. (laughs) Like, I knew that. I know that I need to eat less if I'm overweight. Well, exercise more. Oh, thanks. You know, like life-changing advice. So just to tell someone, hey, make it a lifestyle. You know, I I understand. And that is very true. And I will refer to that a couple of times throughout this episode but that doesn't actually help. So how do we make it a lifestyle? Well, my personal opinion and what I've seen help a lot of people, keep in mind, I'm creeping up. I'm knocking on 1,000 clients' door uh, in my personal training career, if you want to call it at this point. And, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people get results, get motivated, fall back to being unmotivated, go back and forth quit altogether. Obviously, not everyone is, um, you know, I'd love to say that every client I've ever trained has been massively successful, but that's obviously not the case. You know, people fall off for various reasons. Their motivation dwindles and, you know, they can't always get it back. But I'd like to think that at some point in their life, they will wrap back around, uh, get motivated and start moving in the right direction. But to get started with motivation, what I've noticed and a lot of people, myself included, and probably yourself. Motivation is something that comes with results. You might feel motivated, 
But what I've noticed from talking to a lot of people getting started on this journey, <clears throat> motivation in the beginning is actually just excitement. You're not actually motivated. You're excited. You've you've thought about what the future could look like. And a good a good trainer will help you do that. If if you just know that you need to make a change, but you're not feeling excitement, and, and that's a that that's a great start, believe it or not. You know, don't wait around to get motivated because it's not going to happen. And, that, and that's what I'm trying to get at here. Results are motivating. A good trainer, a good partner, uh, a good workout buddy, a, a good friend is going to make you consider what the future will look like once you get in shape, lose weight, feel better, whatever, whatever the health concern is, whatever your goal is. And that will get you excited. Not necessarily motivated, though. Motivation will start when results happen. And that's what we actually need to focus on here in the beginning if we're going to get and stay motivated over the long term. We need results. So the first question, what results do you want? <sighs> Think about it. Do you want to lose weight? Great. Do you want to get stronger? Great. Do you want to take your shirt off at the beach and, you know, everybody, you know, look at you and like, oh my gosh, that's great too. Don't feel bad about that. Just know that that is what the goal is and what type of results you want matter to you. Don't change the results that you're looking for based upon someone else. Your goals are your goals. So make sure you know what those are. And once you know what results you want, because there's so many to pick from. You know, some people just want to feel better. Some people obviously want to look better. Some people want to be stronger. Some people, I just talked to someone the other day, the main goal is to make sure that as the kids get older, he can continue to pick them up, move them around, play with them. That that Those are amazing goals and amazing results that you are looking to achieve. So there's a lot to pick from. Make sure that you pick ones that are relevant to you. And we'll talk about that a little bit later with SMART goals. But make sure you pick the ones that matter to you. And then create a realistic time frame for those results. I can't tell you what those are, right? I, you know, I'm, I'm here speaking in, in general terms. But let me give you a couple of examples of unrealistic time frames that I've heard recently. I talked to someone maybe two or three weeks ago. She came in. She wants to lose 30 pounds. She's not super overweight, but she wants to lose these 30 pounds. I asked, well, how long do you think it should take you to lose those 30 pounds? The answer that I got was, well, at least a month. That's a pound a day. That's not possible. For someone that's not super well third if you're if you want to lose 30 pounds you you may be slightly overweight but you're not obese right let maybe change my terms a little bit if you're not obese your goal should probably be one no more than two pounds per week so in her mind 30 pounds in a month was somewhat realistic but we know it's not, right? So we need to make sure that we create realistic time frames for these goals. Because if you don't, your motivation will fall off. If your goal is to lose 30 pounds in two months and you're one month in and you've lost four pounds, which I'm going to consider a major success, but in your mind, because the goal was not, the time frame attached to the goal is not realistic, you're like, I'm not even doing anything. But in reality, you are. You just had a bad time frame attached to your goal. So once you have that long-term goal, make sure you create small goals along the way. Because most people's goals and the results that, you, that you're that you looking to achieve are likely 6, 12, 18, 24 months away sometimes. So you need to create small goals and small results you want to achieve that come along the way. And again, I, I wish that I could tell you exactly what those are, but I can't because I'm just speaking in general terms right now. But I hope that just this, this thought exercise helps you out to create realistic time frames and small wins along the way. Um, and, and again, some of those small wins might just be 
lifting a certain amount of weight in the gym, right? Uh, what we do is we, we track progress by entering weights into our system. We, tr we enter the weights, and that way, even if someone's goal ultimately is to bench press 50 or 100 pounds or something like that, or maybe their goal is even weight loss, but we want to find other wins along the way, so we, we track that. So I recommend that you do that. Whatever results that you want to achieve, you should track it along the way. That way you continue to stay positive, um, and that motivation will stay high because you're getting a result over and over and over. If you go more than a week or two without some type of small win, I can't even blame you for not being motivated. It's hard. We need to stay positive. And, and setting small wins along the way where you can give yourself a high five for it uh, is, is very important. And then along, along with that, obviously, we need a plan. You need to create a plan that not only leads you to the long-term goal, but also the short ones in the meantime so you can keep getting those wins. Without a plan, it's kind of like, and this sounds really lame, <clears throat> but I always refer back to the GPS example. You know, these days everybody uses their phones for GPS, right? You get in your car and you need to go somewhere. You pull out your phone and put in your GPS. Well, if you don't put a destination in the GPS, it's not taking you anywhere. It's the same thing here. So make sure that you have a, you know where you want to go and then you create a plan to get there over time and get these nice little wins along the way. And, you know, in the beginning, like I mentioned before, that motivation is not going to be there. It might be excitement, which is important. So use that excitement. And then, I hate to say this, but the reality is we got to show some discipline here, right? So discipline is what you need in the beginning to get the results, which will then get you motivated, right? And what's important here, I think, is knowing the variety of ways to measure progress. We talked about this a few minutes ago a little bit, but just know that there's a ton of ways to measure progress, whether it's weight um, in the gym, like the amount of weight you're lifting, uh, amount of weight you've lost, the way that you look, the way that your clothes fit, the compliments that other people give you. Like when they see you and they say something, right, that's very motivating because they're seeing you get results, right? And that's a way, the more compliments you get is a, is a, a, a measurement of the progress that you're getting. So discipline is what you need to rely on in the beginning. And my major tip there is to have to use as little discipline as possible. How do we do that? Well, we raise the barrier of entry to doing things we know are bad for us in that moment. So for example, if you have snack foods, if you have things that you know you shouldn't be eating in your house and you're like, ah, well, I'm just going to have, um, you know, two days a week on uh, Wednesday nights and Friday nights, I'm going to have one piece of that uh, snack cake. Don't do that because what you're doing is every other day on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, you're having to use discipline to not eat that thing because it's in your house. The barrier of entry to that thing is too low. You only have so much discipline, okay? As strong as you think you are, food especially is one that will test you and test you and test you. Do not rely on discipline unless you have to. And you will have to. So you might as well raise the barrier of entry and to, to not use the juice from that discipline meter, you know, or whatever you, you have. Say you have a cup, right? Meter is not a good word. So you have a cup and that cup is full of discipline. You're, the more options you have to test your discipline, you're pouring out of that cup. Don't do that. Keep that cup full as much as you can because you will need it at times. People are going to call you, ask you to go out to eat, out for some drinks. Hey, man, don't go to the gym tonight or don't eat whatever you have. You know, come with us. It's going to be fun. Lo what, what are you, a loser? Are you too good for me? You're going to hear that. And all that's going to test your discipline. They're taken from your cup. Don't 
give up that, you know, the water, the discipline from that cup unless you have to. So lower the barrier of entry to doing good things by having good food in your house, having a plan in place, going to bed on time, getting up on time, all those things, they tap in. When you don't do them, they tap into your discipline. And again, you only have so much. So don't give it up unless you have to. Raise the barrier of entry to doing things you know are off of your plan. Lower your barrier of entry to doing things that you know are on your plan. What does that look like? It looks like meal prepping, right? It looks like setting an alarm on your phone to go to bed. Make sure you get to bed on time. This is one that I have struggled with myself. And I can tell you, when I don't get to bed on time and don't wake up on time, my motivation falls hard. It is very frustrating. It's very difficult. But we just have to know, hey, let's get back on track or we're not going to be. That's when discipline comes into the equation. They have to get back on track, get moving forward. So don't rely on that discipline unless you have to, because I promise you have a finite amount. Okay. So, and then <clears throat> just to kind of reiterate, we talked a little bit earlier about smart goals. You know, we need to really define the, we talked earlier about the result that we want, right? Well, what does like success really look like? You know, you need to know what success is to you. You need to know what that long-term goal is so you can refer back to it. And let's talk about SMART goals real quick. If you don't know what SMART is, it's just an acronym. Um, SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. So every goal that you set needs to be specific, right? It needs to be detailed. It needs to be measurable so we can, we can track it over time for those small wins. Achievable, realistic, which we already talked about, right? Relevant, it matters to you. And time-bound, it has an end goal, and so that's where that whole, like, just make it a lifestyle thing. Yeah, that's great. But when? You know, that, that's why making something a lifestyle, there, there's no, the, the, it's missing the time-bound aspect. So it's very important that we, we set these smart goals, achieve them along the way, and that becomes our lifestyle, right? And it does take time for that to happen. And that's why keeping those short-term wins in mind along the way is so important. And a couple things that, that do help and uh, might sound kind of little like, hippy dippy stuff, you know, but sometimes the hippy stuff's good stuff. Um, when you, you know, when that motivation is dwindling, like use some visualiz visualization. Like if we know what success looks like, just take 60 seconds, close your eyes, visualize what that person looks like. Think about what you could do when you reach that end goal right? And as lame as that sounds, that small thing will get you just that little spark of motivation that you need in that moment, right? Get you that spark of excitement. And then that excitement will allow you to get disciplined for a period of time, get you some results, and that motivation kicks back in. So you always want to be able to refer back to what you originally wanted in visualization, can be a great way to do that. Write them down. I'm a huge fan. I actually haven't done this in a while myself, so maybe I'll get back to it. Like, actually, and I, and I learned this from uh, a guy named Grant Cardone, who's big, like, like more on the real estate side, and a lot of people don't like him. But um, one thing that I learned from him is <laughs> when you write your goals down, you write them down as if they already happened. Like, I, if your goal is to weigh under 200 pounds. You're not going to write down, I want to weigh less than 200 pounds. You're going to write down, I weigh 198 pounds. And you're, you're making it feel present. You're, make, you're writing it down as if it already happened. I can play baseball with my grandkids. I am playing baseball with my grandkids. I am pitching to them as they hit the ball and run around the bases. And that makes it feel like it's actually happening because that will implant confidence in you. And remember that the way we actually build confidence is to say we're going to do something and then do it. And then you say you're going to do something again. You do it again and again and again and again. That is how confidence is built. And that, 
I, I'm telling you from experience, will fall down as well. This actually just happened uh, about a week ago, I think, is a perfect example of when uh, I did a very poor job of this. Um, but overcame, and now back on it this week, getting to bed on time, getting up on time, and moving in the right direction. Motivation is back. And for sure, lots of ups and downs that is totally normal. And that is where, you know, the lifestyle thing, it is accurate. It is so true. And so I hope that today I was able to just give you a little bit of something different, um, you know, when it, when it comes to staying motivated. The, the I, I think it's nice to say, oh, just, you know, stay motivated and uh, think about your goals and stuff. And all those are important. We even talked about some of those today. But what I want to reiterate is results are motivating. If your goal is to lose weight, you weigh 250 pounds today. You step on the scale tomorrow, it says 249. You step on the scale next week, it says 248. And then next month, it says 245. You will be motivated. Results are motivating, right? So we need to lean into the discipline, focus on habit forming, right? Because you know, if we try to change too many major things at once, it feels a little overwhelming. You know what I mean? So focus on your habits, right? Make small habit changes, lower the barrier of entry to doing things that you know are good for you that are part of your plan. Raise the barrier of entry for things that are not part of your plan. Rely on discipline less, right? Focus on the habits, get results, get motivated. Have fun. I hope this helps. If you have questions, please do let me know. If you need help defining what your actual end goal is and help creating a plan to get those small wins along the way to your end goal, let us know. That's what we do. Um, our current gym is in Webster. We should be opening in Pearland very soon. And if you're listening to this, months or years into the future. Hopefully we have other locations around Houston as well. You can find us on Instagram, OTG Fitness, um, all social platforms, OTG Fitness, and on YouTube, it's only the greatest. Please do comment below. Um, we'd be, our, our website is otgfitness.com. We are here to help, um, especially the type of person that needs to hear content like this, the reason that we make content like this, is the type of person that we specialize in helping. The person that is struggling to stay motivated. They don't want to work out. They don't feel comfortable in the gym. I understand. I was you. Let us help you. We can get you there. You can go to otgfitness.com, throw your information in there. Either myself or Denver, probably Denver, will give you a call and discuss how we can help. If there are other things you would like us to discuss in this podcast or you know people in Houston that specialize in something health and fitness related, please connect us. Um, you know, a lot of our episodes have guests, so go, make sure you go check those out. And we're always looking for experts in their field to come on and provide value uh, to the people of Houston and, uh, you know, allow health and fitness to be a bigger part of their life. So guys, uh, like, subscribe comment all those things mean a ton to us and we'll see you next time